So today I'm going to explain about the automotive cyber security. And uh, so the topics related to that. So we just go through the table of contents, uh, what we are going to discuss today in this webinar. So mainly related to the introduction to the automotive industry. So which I'm going to explain about uh, what is the automotive industry. Maybe the people who are familiar with it is all, uh, well and good, but uh, maybe I'll just give a small introduction about it to understand what exactly is that. Uh, we are going to go through these latest trends in the automotive industry. Uh, what are the latest trends and uh, the technologies we are going, we are using and uh, maybe uh, the people are going to use in future. And what does the cybersecurity mean? And what is the cybersecurity needed for the automotive sector? and the implementation of cybersecurity in automotive sector. And uh, the main part is uh, the career perspectives in the cybersecurity and how it will help your career. So uh, the people already know what is uh, automotive industry, uh, where, uh, because most of the people, they are familiar with the vehicles, like everybody is uh, maybe using the car, maybe e-bikes, or uh, maybe we'll be using the bus for the public transport. So as simple as that, uh, so all these uh, segments uh, will come under the automotive industry. So which is uh, actually a kind, it's a wide range of organization and companies with a critical objectives of design, developing, marketing and manufacturing and selling of motor vehicles. So in the segment, uh, it comes under the, the automotive industries are bus, trucks, uh, at mowers, cars, e-rickshaws and LTVs and the special purpose vehicles. So this is the list of the OEM uh, manufacturers in the automotive industry. I think uh, the list is very big and uh, uh, I think most of the uh, the names are familiar, the, uh, like Kia Motors and Suzuki and uh, RD, for example, uh, so Mercedes, everything. Uh, so all these are like a big, big players in this market. Uh, so mainly, uh, so I just want to show you the graph uh, related to the data, how the vehicle productions are going. Uh, it's increasing from the 1950 to 2010. If you see clearly, I think uh, so. This graph is uh, related to how many vehicles on which year uh, the productions, uh, as per the country, uh, like USA, Canada, Japan, and uh, the France, everything. If you see this graph, actually, it is dramatically increased from 1950 to 2010. Almost, it went into like uh, uh, millions of vehicles, uh, vehicle production. So this is where actually we have a very like a scope uh, in the automotive industries uh, uh, for a lot of jobs inside that and uh, de depends on the different segments. And if you see this, uh, the automotive global imports and exports also, it will go around. Uh, uh, we see it is a 2011 data, uh, but it will be uh, might be uh, two times more than this uh, uh, when you see in the 2020. Uh, so it is like 200. Uh, billions of uh, money, I mean, the uh, imports and exports are going to happen every year. So the latest trends uh, in the automotive sector, uh, so mainly now the automotive sectors are uh, previously, you see the car uh, is like uh, just we are going to use for the transport. And uh, slowly it has moved from the transport to the entertainment uh, where the people can uh, uh, see their HMI and they can uh, play the media and they can use the Bluetooth uh, phones to communicate with the people and uh, the maps to navigate. So now I think recently, I, if you see the next, uh, the upcoming feature technologies like uh, car uh, is going to have a inbuilt connectivity and uh, the electrification, like uh, if you see the big players like Tesla and uh, even most of the cars now they are coming to the electrification. Uh, to avoid the uh, pollution, uh, uh, the vehicle pollutions uh, all over the world. And we are getting the autonomous driving as uh, you know, uh, every year, uh, I think because of the road accidents, uh, many people are getting died because of the human errors or uh, it might be uh, because of uh, some other issues in the car. So all most of the OEMs now, they are targeting uh, to move to the autonomous driving so that uh, it, it is helpful to decrease the death rate uh, uh, for the road accidents every year uh, by just uh, introducing a lot of technologies inside like many UCUs and uh, uh, the things are going to come into picture. So uh, if you see this, these technologies, uh, when the technologies are growing uh, normally, uh, so definitely there will be a loopholes and uh, there will be a lot of issues in the system where uh, the hackers can use that one as a 
as a kind of a, uh, the, uh, the, the, the weakness of the system and then they can go inside and they can uh, create a lot of mess out of it, right? So uh, these are the main trends, uh, actually, uh, I think in the, the next uh, coming, uh, most of the things are like, uh, it's already in place, but uh, it will take a little more time to, to be a full-fledged uh, uh, autonomous driving cars or the cars which have the connectivity. So the autonomous driving cars, maybe I just give a small, uh, just uh, introduction of it. Uh, uh, so normally the autonomous uh, vehicles, uh, it's like, uh, they have a lot of sensors and they have a lot of uh, uh, lot of ECUs inside your car so that it will be monitoring uh, the vehicle movements as well as the object uh, movements around your car uh, to understand to understand the movement of the car so that uh, even the without the driver the car can take the decision uh, to move left or right or just go in the same line so this is nothing but autonomous vehicles uh, where uh, actually this is one of the technology uh, m mostly, I think by 2030, or you can see most of the cars with autonomous vehicles at least the level three. So, what is the cyber security uh, actually? So, the cyber security is nothing but uh, I think you guys are already familiar with the IT cyber security. For example, when we have the uh, desktop, uh, when you are accessing your uh, networks uh, in your office, we'll be having a lot of firewalls. Uh, uh, to predict uh, any uh, any firmwares are uh, unnecessarily coming into the system and uh, uh, maybe the loss of data or maybe it will corrupt the, your data in the system. So uh, this is like, uh, let's say if this will happen, uh, let's say inside your desktop or it may be inside our network system, uh, there will be a no loss of life because they are not so critical that uh, maybe one or two days of operation might have stopped. but. It's not like a critical that you lose your life because of that. So uh, the cyber security is actually, we are already, I think I go, uh, you guys are already familiar what is the cyber security, but uh, uh, we are now actually discussing, we are more discussing into the automotive cyber security, which is uh, when compared to, the, uh, to your networking issues or uh, related to the internet or banking services, this is a more a little more critical when it comes to the aerospace and the automotive domain because the hackers can hack your cars or ecu and then can do whatever they want maybe they can do a reversal operation when you pressing the brake and uh, it will not press the brake because everything will uh, communicate with the ecu to apply the brake and uh, may uh, go in a reverse direction and uh, the people can uh, lose their life so it, it's about uh, uh, the criticality uh, when you come to the automotive cyber security. So the implementation of the cyber security in the automotive industry, if you see, uh, for example, this is the, let's say we have a car and uh, in the current cars, uh, which have uh, very advanced technologies, like uh, they will be connected to the Bluetooth, they will be connected with the Wi-Fi and they can connect uh, the Bluetooth with your mobile and laptop and uh, uh, maybe um, the cars are connecting to the cloud services and uh, so a lot of services i think uh, we can we are having now inside our cars so because of this complexity so there is a lot of open points or a lot of loopholes where the hacker can um, attack your car or maybe they can send uh, uh, some unwanted data or which is uh, not unauthorized data to change your direction of the car or maybe uh, it will change, uh, maybe uh, it can hack and it will do the airbag operations. A lot of things can be done uh, uh, by hacking uh, car ECUs. So maybe I'll just give a simple example, like uh, uh, maybe in the next slide, I'll give a simple example. So if you see a car, uh, normally we have a lot of modules inside this. Like, uh, so whatever you are seeing, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, like the blue line, whichever it is showing is a canvas and uh, the gray line, the lean bus and the, uh, and the green and the ASR bus and the flexi bus. If you show, if you see, there are a lot of lines are going and it's like a network uh, connectivity between the ECUs. Uh, they might be using a lot of topologies like CAN network, lean network and the flexi bus. So for example, if we see that uh, there is a CAN topology, so what it will do is uh, the CAN is like, uh, again, a uh, kind of a uh, node based, uh, uh, communication it will happen for example in the CAN bus we have uh, nodes when it is connecting to the CAN bus 
whatever the message we are sending from one node to the another node, it's like a broadcast. So whenever you are sending the message, it will be going to all the nodes. But which node, I mean, for example, who, what are the nodes they are interested? They are going to, what you say, they are going to decrypt the message and they are going to do their operation based on that. So the, the issues which is connected on the canvas will work like that. So for example, if the hacker, they can connect, they are able to connect your any dummy issue, something to your canvas. They can get whatever the messages are going through your canvas. So maybe it might be a, something like a safety, like related to the airbag messages, maybe the temperature, maybe the maybe the brake systems. So all these things we, he can able to see through the canvas uh, messages uh, coming to their EC. So if he is able to identify uh, what operation, what is the uh, by by using the data, if he able to understand, let's say for example, it is like a, uh, some messages are coming from the braking system and he is trying to press the brake. So he can manipulate and he can send, he can reply to that message with a manipulated data so that uh, it may happen, it may go in a reverse order like when you're pressing the, maybe when you're pressing the brake, uh, maybe it will not work or uh, maybe the airbag will not, uh, will not come up uh, during your crash of the system. So this kind of hacking the users, I mean the, the, the hackers can do. If you are CAN bus or a, a lean bus, uh, they are not fully secured. Yeah, this is a, a, a simple example because when when we are seeing the, the advanced uh, cars, uh, which is uh, maybe once they are coming into the autonomous driving or uh, maybe once they are uh, supporting the electrification, everything. So every year it is going to increase. I mean, if you see the average modern car nowadays, we have 70 ECUs and where the high end cars, we have 100 ECUs and uh, Luxury cars, we have 150 ECUs. So it's everything is connected. And uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, the gaps or uh, maybe in the system flaws that uh, the hacker can understand and uh, maybe he can uh, send the manipulated data to hack your car if the security measures are not properly handled. So uh, once, uh, okay, as we see, there is a lot of uh, uh, the complexity of handling these many ECUs and their security concerns. And uh, nowadays, if you see the cars are connecting to the external world, in the sense, the cars are, uh, the, the car softwares or ECUs are getting updated over the air. It's like uh, the software packages will be downloaded from the cloud and it will come directly to your car. And uh, once the user accepts that, the software ad update will be done uh, seamlessly. It means uh, even the user doesn't know the software update is happening in the background. If it is a, a not critical, but if it is a critical, of course, they will go to the dealer's place to do the software update. But the seamless updates also, it's like uh, if you are not able to properly authorize the package which is coming from the cloud, uh, the, the hacker can send uh, the corrupted image to your car and maybe your car uh, may behave in a different direction other than uh, if, if uh, the images are not properly validated or uh, maybe we are not followed any uh, security uh, details when we are connecting to the external world and uh, we are connecting our car to the servers, which is uh, actually in the cloud and where we don't know where it is, uh, uh, the data centers are there. And your uh, the data which is going every time because once the autonomous vehicles will come, actually the V2X technologies come inside. So the V2X is nothing but uh, uh, the car which is on the road will communicate with the other car without your intervention because they have their own protocols and they will uh, decide whether they have to go to the left side or right side. What is the margin they have to maintain between the cars? And so everything will be taken care by the cars. So if somebody will hack that and uh, it, it, it's like a gone case and we can uh, create an accident very easily. So that's why I, I think the OEMs, uh, they have a very, very big challenge uh, when we are going towards the future because they need a lot of security measures to take care and they have a lot of regulations they have to satisfy because for Japan, uh, uh, I think recently they have, uh, they have came up with the regulations for every component like e-call, like uh, software update, they have their own regulations. And if the OEMs, they want to release the car in the Japan market, 
they have to follow the regulations without that uh, they will not allow the oem to sell the car in that country so that is how the complexity even uh, is increasing because even the government agencies they are very concerned about uh, about uh, the automotive sector so how they will achieve this uh, security uh, measure how i mean how, how they can uh, uh, take care of the security um, uh, things uh, so we can see that uh, these are all the uh, the components uh, what uh, uh, mainly the automotive sector is going to work because uh, they have everything they have the certification uh, like iso standards they are going to follow and these are all the main the what you say the topics uh, they are going to work to bring the automotive sector uh, in a very secured manner so uh, these are the main standards uh, actually they are going to follow uh, most of the oems to make sure uh, they are uh, following the good principles when they are designing the system uh, in a secured way uh, so for example uh, this iso 26262 is belongs to the functional safety forecast uh, which is uh, again they have a lot of topics inside to to cover uh, how the e call module should be uh, uh, have a secure uh, security things and if you go to the software update how the things should be there so all these things will be depending on the standards and the, they are going to use the mistra c or a such c to make sure that whatever the code you are writing is proper and it should not allow any uh, security breach or allow the hacker to uh, to hack uh, your system and do their malfunctioning over there so um, after uh, we see the productions uh, in terms of production of the vehicles and in terms of the features uh, what uh, they are going to deliver in the future the career per- perspective and prospectives are uh, really very good for this uh, automotive industry and even in the cyber security uh, because uh, the market for this uh, uh industry is uh, like billions and millions of dollars which is uh, they every oem they need uh, uh, thousands of employees who really want to work on the cyber security to make sure that uh, their systems is are very secure that they can go to the grade 4 or uh, the high level i mean the the, the high level uh, autonomous driving cars by 2023 or maybe 2030 25 so in in terms of the career of course yeah uh, i think it's very uh, very very good uh, opportunities you'll get uh, in terms of the automotive cyber security so this is all about uh, what is the automotive cyber security and how the oems uh, what are the oems we have and uh, uh, what are the complexities we have and we are implementing the cyber security and what are the standards they are following up uh, to achieve the cyber security uh, quality of uh, their product to make sure the security is uh, uh, proper and all the regulations are satisfied by most of the countries to make it will help them to uh, release the vehicles very smoothly into the market so uh, this is all about uh, uh, this topic uh, 